Iran has failed in its cynical efforts to take advantage of the Arab Spring. And to put it mildly, mildly the Arab Spring has been unkind to Iran. You can't imagine con a narratives that contrast more. The season of change clearly, this is our assessment, caught Iranian leaders flat-footed and unprepared. The events from Tunis to Damascus have made a lie over Tehran's claims that change can only come through violent resistance. And meanwhile, the Iranian regime's hypocrisy has been exposed as they purport to celebrate these uprisings abroad while continuing to crush dissent at home. Just like Al-Qaeda, and again, this has presented a fundamental narrative, the Arab Spring has presented a fundamental narrative challenge to Al-Qaeda. Iran's model of extremism, violence, and the denial of human rights is being repudiated by a generation that is now demanding the universal rights by taking to the streets across the Middle East, North Africa. Indeed, young people in Tunisia or Egypt or Libya or Syria are not protesting in order to be more like Iran. Not surprisingly, the data and polling of public opinion consistently shows that Iran's image in the region has plummeted. Uh, while in 2006, uh, the uh, favorability, Iran's favorability in the Arab nations stood at about 80% generally, it's now down to an average below 30%. The most common reasons for this are given are Iran's crossing a dissent at home, underscored by the reaction in the 2009 elections, its meddling in the region, its fomenting of sectarian uh, conflict, and its pursuit of its nuclear program. Rather than looking to Iran, people in these Arab countries are looking in the opposite direction, towards universal rights, towards democracy. And as they do, President Obama has placed the United States firmly on the right side of history, making it clear that the policy of the United States is to promote reform across the region and support transition to democracy.